Hello and welcome to the second part of the UB Noise Flow introduction tutorial. In the first video I explained the frame which is the UB Noise Flow project template and in the second video I'm gonna give you an overview about the action which is the UB Noise Flow itself. Logic newbies and rookies who can follow have the option to watch the Logic Basic tutorials that belong to the UB Noise Flow. Okay, I prepared a flowchart to give you a better overview about the starting points and how the UB Noise Flow develops. You see up here is the starting point and you begin with the decision. Do you have a melody or harmonies in mind, where all the key tracks of the Logic Drum Machine would disturb you? Then start outside the UB Noise Flow folder. If you want to start with beat production, like you would do it with Battery, Guru, Machine or Logic's Ultra Beat, then start inside the UB Noise Flow folder. No matter where you start at, you will come to the point where you need to draw your beat idea. Outside the folder in the main range, you'll use the Startup Kit. Inside the folder you can make a decision between the startup kit or the Logic Drum Machine track. If we follow the arrows of the flowchart you see that we always gonna end up on the Logic Drum Machine track. I'm going to explain all the steps above too, but we are going to start here at the heart. Ok, open the UB Noise Flow folder, select one of the key tracks and open the EXS24. Link the plugin with a click on the symbol. Now we can move with the arrow keys up and down and the plugin window will always show us the instrument of the selected track. Because we linked the plugin. Open the media library and the piano roll editor. Place the plugin window next to the media library and resize it, but make sure that you can reach all controls. Now you have a workspace that is similar to the Ultrabeat plugin. On the left you select the key that you want to work on. The plugin window switches to the selected key because it's linked. In the media library you have your sounds that you can load with a click. And down here is the piano roll editor where you can draw and adjust notes. Let's select C1 kick 1. Go to the single drums folder in the media library to load a kick. Select the key track D1 snare 1 and load a snare. You are now on the key track for the snare and you cannot hear the loaded kick in context. Simply switch directly from the key track to the Logic Drum Machine track to play both sounds. The great thing is that the plugin window still displays the last selected key track before we switch to the Logic Drum Machine track. That's because the Logic Drum Machine is a MIDI track and MIDI tracks don't have any plugin slots. If I now select the key track F sharp 1 closed hi hat and go back to the Logic Drum Machine, I can play all sounds and context while I'm searching the right sound for the hi hat. Go to the Droptimized Logic Factory sounds that you can download for free from the Speed Up My Door support forum and load hi hats. Once you are in the Droptimize folder, you can use the next and previous button to load the sounds. And for sure you can use the corresponding key comments to do it. Ok, go to the key track D sharp 1 claps. Let's say you have organized your sounds in banks, which means that you have one EXS instrument with various clap sounds over the whole key range. Let's open the instrument editor to see the keyboard in the zones. As long as you are on the corresponding key track you can play them all, but if you move to the Logic Drum Machine track you can only play the sound that is played on D-sharp 1 of the instrument. But if you use the transpose of the EXS instrument, you are able to move the whole key range up and down to search the right sound. In the transport you see that I'm still triggering D-sharp 1, but the EXS instrument transposes the incoming note. The transpose of the EXS can go plus minus 24 semitones. If you need higher values, you can use the transposition of the track parameter box. You will find it in the inspector of the key track. Here you can set the transposition to plus minus 96 semitones. So that's the way you work with sound banks. But in the same way you can work with drop to my sounds too. You see that the key tracks A sharp 0, B0 and C1 are all kick tracks. But all kicks of the Droptimize library are pitched to C1. 
Let's load the same kick to these tracks. When we play the kicks on the Logic Drum Machine track, we will hear the same pitched sound like on the key tracks. If I set the EXS transpose of B0 to plus 1, and the transpose of A sharp 0 on plus 2, the Logic Drum Machine will play the same kick with the same pitch. Let's select the key track C3 high bongo and select percussions out of the Droptimized Logic Factory sound. If we go to congas, you see that all Droptimized instruments are set to the root key C3. You might wonder because you would expect that the root key for conga sounds is set around D3 to E3 because that's the place where you can find them on the general MIDI drum map. Let's open the mixer and let me explain to you the sound orientation strategy of the UB Noise Flow. For sure, like I told you, we follow the general MIDI drum map, but we don't want to build a prison. In the example with the pitched kick drum, you saw that it's unnecessary to set the root key to B0 or A sharp 0, because with the transpose and the tune of the EXS we can adjust it easy and fast. That's why the root key of all kicks is set to C1. In the mixer pane and in the range, you see that the kick tracks are painted blue, to visualize that they are part of one group. Let's take a look at the green group. Here it makes sense to be more precise with the root key settings because claps, snares and side sticks are often used basic beat elements. For sure you can use the whole group to build one clap or one snare sound. Select C sharp 1 and load a transient snare. Select D1 to load a body snare. Select the Logic Drum Machine track to play them both together. I want to tune the transient snare on C sharp 1. Select the key track of the sound you want to adjust and go back to the Drum Machine track. That's the way you tune the sounds to each other. The next group are toms, placed at the white keys from F1 to D1. You see the way to the Logic Drum Machine track becomes far. Just place the track in the range next to the toms. Let's select the key track F1. Go to the media library and type in tom in the search. You see a lot of instruments because we dropped them as some sample libraries. Most of them have the root key set to F1. That's cool if you are going for an unusual tom set. But if you are going for a usual set of toms, you would have to work with the transposition of the EXS. That takes too much time. And that's why it's the better choice to search for kit. And with the kits you have your tom sets. I'm gonna choose the 70s kit. Before we go on, let's take a look at the activity monitor. And note the value of the RAM usage. Let's record some tom figures. Let's take a look at the activity monitor again and note the CPU usage. At the key track F1 we have a 70s kit loaded, with the tom set we want to use. If we switch to the Logic Drum Machine track we cannot play the set, we only hit the toms on F1. Go to the key track F1 again, copy the plugin settings in the plugin window, move with the arrow keys to the next tom track and paste the settings, and do this to all other drum tracks. If we switch back to the Logic Drum Machine track, you hear that we can play the whole set now. And if we move the tom figure region to the Logic Drum Machine track and take a look at the activity monitor to compare the noted values, you see that the transformation from one track playing the toms to six tracks playing the same costs nearly nothing of CPU or RAM usage, and that's cool. One time the samples are loaded into the RAM, you can copy the kit to all tracks, and it costs you only a small amount of CPU performance. <laughs> 